Raspberry Pi have removed the default username for the Raspberry Pi OS. This is a security feature which potentially makes the Raspberry Pi more secure. I say potentially, as your choice of password has much more impact than changing the username, especially if you choose a simple password. I've discussed this in more details in my other channel, Penguin Fortress. See the description below for a link to that video. In this video, I'm going to explain about some of the changes I needed to make to my Pixel Server software and provide a guide to installing the Pixel Server software on a Raspberry Pi with the latest 64-bit version of the Raspberry Pi OS. Hopefully this should be useful for other people wanting to make the changes to support the latest version of the Raspberry Pi OS where users can select a different username. There are a few different ways of coping with the loss of the slash home slash pi home directory, but the one I chose was to install into the slash opt directory. This does mean it needs to be installed as root, but the very nature of the pixel server means that it already requirement to be able to control the LEDs. I'm going to show the install process, starting with the Raspberry Pi imager and installing it to the SD card. This is the Raspberry Pi imager, which is the easiest way to install an image, and this has been updated with the new changes. Run this on your local PC, and it will download the latest version of the operating system and install it onto the SD card. In this case, I'm using the Raspberry Pi 64-bit version, but you can use the 32-bit version as well, particularly if you have an older model of the Raspberry Pi. Choose your SD card and click right, and it'll take a while now to download the image over the internet and then install it onto your SD card. After installing to your SD card, you can boot that in the Raspberry Pi and you'll see this first run wizard start up. You first set your country and that's important for the wireless install as well as setting your time zone. Uh, you'll then be prompted to create a user. And in this case, I'm creating a user called Pixel Server and of course, giving it a secure password. You can then connect to your wireless network, install the updates, and you'll need to reboot. That's the operating system installed. And now we can move on to rebooting, and then we can make some changes to the operating system ready for installing the software. After rebooting, I'm now going to enable remote access so I can configure the rest over the local network. Now go to the Raspberry Pi configuration. Turn on SSH, which allows command line access, and VNC, which allows graphical access to the desktop. Hover over the network status icon to get the IP address, then reboot. This assumes your network will keep the same IP address after a reboot, but most do. I disconnected the screen, but this caused a slight problem. There have been changes to the resolution program to allow different screens to have different resolutions. But now this means that if you don't have a screen attached, and it defaults to a very small screen size. This can probably be fixed using a manual configuration change. I haven't had a chance to investigate that yet, but putting a HDMI dummy plug-in worked for now. You can now access the desktop through VNC to complete the configuration. You could also do this using the command line over SSH if you preferred. Start a terminal. Install the WS281X library using sudo pip3 install rpi underscore ws281x. After that's installed, change to the slash opt directory using cd slash opt. Then make a directory called pixel hyphen server. You'll need to use sudo to be able to write the slash opt directory. So it's sudo mkdir pixel hyphen server. You can now change ownership to your own username. This will allow you to update the program as updates happen and update the config using your own username. 
Note that this will mean that the user that you're using has the ability to run programs as root. Although, if you have sudo permissions, you have that already. So do this using sudo chown for change owner, dollar user to indicate the current user, pixel hyphen server. You can then clone the software into that directory. Again, this is going to allow this program to root as root, so make sure you use a source that you trust. The official version is available from the Penguin Tutor GitHub repository. Git clone https colon double slash github.com slash penguin tutor slash pixel hyphen server dot git. You can then run it from here. If you want to have it start up automatically whenever you start the Raspberry Pi, then copy the pixel server dot service file to the system D directory. Change the file owner to root. And the permissions to allow it to be executable. You can then use systemctl to start the daemon and enable it so that it starts automatically on startup. You can also check the status using systemctl with the status command. To test, you can open a web browser and go to 127.0.0.1 or to the IP address that you're connected to. Choose the sequence and choose apply. If you are not using the default settings and you probably need to change at least the number of pixels that you have, you can configure that by making a copy of the defaults.cfg file to a new file called pixelserver.cfg. You can then change any of the settings as per the readme.md file included in the GitHub repository. One more thing you may want to do is to change to a static IP address instead of the dynamic IP address that it is set to by default. This can either be done on your router or by changing the IP address through the icon that we used previously to, to find out what the IP address of the Raspberry Pi was. Note that how to do this depends upon your particular network setup as you need to set an IP address that's outside of the range of your DHCP server. This is beyond the scope of this video but I'll put a link in the description that will take you to somewhere which will give you a bit more information on how you can look at doing that. So this video has shown how you can set up a Raspberry Pi using the 64-bit version of the OS and how you can change the default username. I've also shown how you can install an application to the slash shop directory without needing to configure the username into any files. This is specifically because I'd updated the program to use the slash shop directory already. For other programs, you may need to make some modifications to the file paths. I hope that was useful. If so, please give it a like. I'll be creating more videos on the Raspberry Pi in future, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on the notifications. I look forward to seeing you in my next video.